in this class we are going to study about malignant nephrosclerosis that means what happens in the kidney what are the pathological changes uh, which take place in the kidney in the malignant phase of hypertension that means in the malignant hypertension right so this is the diagram i am going to explain in the end see here what is malignant nephrosclerosis i told you nephrosclerosis in the malignant phase of hypertension okay before that let's understand what is hypertension obviously you know when the blood pressure rises beyond 140 systolic or 90 diastolic not at one point of time but you have to take multiple readings okay then then that is uh, called hypertension but what are the causes for hypertension okay so the idiopathic or when you, when you cannot identify the exact cause but yet there is hypertension then it, you are going to call it as primary hypertension or essential hypertension but there are cer certain causes they are called secondary causes for example renal causes themselves for example any cause of nephritic syndrome okay we have seen several uh, pathological conditions where there is nephritis there is going to uh, the bp is going to get increased okay that is a renal cause what are the adrenal cause okay because of increased aldosterone the the blood pressure may rise what do you call that as con syndrome con syndrome or because of increased uh, even uh, glucocorticoids the blood pressure is going to increase what do you call that as cushing syndrome okay cushing syndrome right or because of uh, thyroid diseases okay don't think only hyperthyroidism can cause uh, increased blood pressure even hypothyroidism ca can cause increased blood pressure okay hyperthyroidism means obviously the metabolism is uh, increased the heart rate is increased the obviously the blood pressure is going to get increased but what about hypothyroidism how there is increased blood pressure in uh hypothyroidism okay if you know the answer please comment in the comment section but now i'll explain anyway hypothyroidism what it's going to do is it is going to increase the total peripheral resistance total peripheral resistance total peripheral resistance means what the resistance of all the resistance vessels the resistance of all the resistance of all resistance vessels what are these resistance vessels these resistance vessels means arterioles means the small blood vessels the small arterioles uh, whose compliance is very less okay right so now the heart has to pump against this resistance the heart has to pump against this resistance that's why the blood pressure is going to get increased okay so in hypothyroidism the bp may be less or even it may be more okay right don't think that only hyperthyroidism is going to increase the blood pressure both the hyper uh, as well as the hypothyroidism can cause increased blood pressure okay what are the other cause of what are the other secondary causes like we have certain diseases like pheochromocytoma pheochroma pheochromocytoma okay this is the tumor of adrenal medulla adrenal medulla this is also going to increase the blood pressure what are the other causes that we can think of we can think of like aortic causes like coarctation of aorta okay so this also can uh, increase the blood pressure just remember some causes of blood pressure what is blood pressure more than 140 by 90 in two or more occasions and what are the causes what is the primary or the essential thing where we don't know the cause the secondary causes like uh, already we discussed three syndromes main syndromes like increased aldosterone that is con syndrome increased the glucocorticoids that is cushing syndrome or there may be hyperthyroidism or maybe hypothyroidism or increase in the uh, adrenal medulla adrenal medulla tumor uh, means it releases adrenaline and noradrenaline okay this is going to uh, increase the bp to a very large extent okay and aortic coarctation of aorta can also cause uh, hypertension but now we have to understand what is what are some terms associated with hypertension hypertensive urgency hypertensive urgency means the the blood pressure is very high more than 200 by 120 uh, but it is not to an that an extent that there is some organ damage okay the severe increase in blood pressure without any organ damage is called hypertensive urgency but when there are signs of organ damage when there are signs and symptoms of organ damage then you are going to call it as an hypertensive emergency okay 
one subtype of hypertensive emergency is malignant hypertension okay subtype that means there is increased hypertension along with some organ damage like in eye there is so going to get some uh, retinal damage okay there is some damage in the kidney that that we are going to study now that is malignant nephrosclerosis or there may be an encephalopathy okay so this is what malignant hypertension is let's define uh, malignant hypertension okay i told you hypertensive emergency means when the blood pressure is very high more than 180 by 120 like that but in malignant hypertension so there is retinal damage okay in the form of exudates in the form of papilledema this papilledema means disc edema okay and additionally there is renal involvement okay so that is called malignant hypertension okay you have to know the subtle uh, differences between hypertensive urgency hypertensive emergency and malignant hypertension okay now let's understand what what uh, occurs in the kidney okay what are the changes which occur in the kidney see the blood pressure is obviously it's going to affect the blood vessels okay that is there is vascular damage vascular damage okay most commonly the vascular damage is because of hypertension but there are other causes also like arteritis that is inflammation of the walls systemic sclerosis okay diabetes mellitus they are also going to affect the blood vessels but most of the time uh, the nephrosclerosis is going to is because of hypertension only see what happens there is hyperplastic arteriosclerosis this is the term that you have to use uh, in malignant hypertension okay that means so this is the blood vessel this is the inner lining is the endothelium okay because of hypertension because of hypertension see this is the endothelium because of hypertension the endothelium is going to get damaged endothelium is going to get damaged okay see me this endothelium is damaged now this endothelium is damaged let's imagine now and uh, what happens to the damaged endothelium when the endothelium is damaged the underlying collagen is exposed now this collagen is exposed underlying uh, collagen is exposed now this endothelial cells the damaged endothelium cells they are going to release a factor on, known as vwf one willebrand factor okay so this is the one willebrand factor okay but if you know the platelets have one willebrand factor receptor vwf receptors so the platelets are going to get attached to this vwf and the platelets then again activate some receptors which attach the fibrinogen which attach the fibrinogen like this a platelet fibrin plug is going to get formed in the damaged area platelet fibrin plug is going to get formed in the damaged area obviously this causes fibrinoid necrosis fibrinoid necrosis this causes release of platelet derived growth factor from the platelets so this is the pathogenesis behind all the changes which occurs in the blood vessel what happens in the blood vessel arteriosclerosis arteriosclerosis means this is a blood vessel around it the fibroblast the smooth muscle cells are going to get proliferated there will be some fibrinoid necrosis okay there will be fibrinoid necrosis here okay there is some hellenization here okay so these all changes together we are going to call as hyperplastic arteriosclerosis this is the term that you are going to remember whenever somebody says malignant nephrosclerosis okay let's understand the uh, sequence now you can write it down whenever there is endothelial damage because of hypertension i told you endothelial cells they are going to release uh, uh, vwf this is the way they are going to cry okay they release vwf and this vwf binds to the collagen why it binds to the collagen because the collagen is exposed now so to that the von willebrand factor is going to get attached but I told you platelets have what do the platelets have they have all willebrand factor receptors also called GP1B receptor so that uh, they will go and bind to the uh, one willebrand factor okay again platelets get activated they express fibrinogen receptors fibrinogen receptors they are also called GP2B3A receptors right because of all this what is going to happen the fibrinogen and platelets uh, they are going to bind and they are going to form a plug why they are actually forming a plug they are forming a plug because they are thinking that there is some endothelial damage they are going to some there is there will be uh, uh, since there is damage to the blood vessel they are they want to block it okay they want to minimize the vessel damage okay see this is the endothelium when the, the endothelium is damaged so this releases vwf okay vwf but platelets have vwf receptors and platelets have fibrinogen receptors okay so this is going to form a platelet fibrin plug
plug okay this is the uh, when again platelets i told you they release this platelet derived growth factor and all this growth factor causes proliferation of not only fibroblasts but also so these are the fibroblasts they are going to proliferate the fibroblasts but also the smooth muscle cells smooth muscle cells but what is the result what is the result of all this what is the effect of hyperplastic uh, arteriosclerosis the lumen is going to get narrowed this causes ischemia ischemia i told you this by mistake this is actually a cheating on part of the kidney because there is already hypertension but the kidney is not uh, able to understand that there is hypertension because there is renal ischemia so the kidney thinks that there is insufficient blood flow within me so it presses on the accelerator which is the accelerator the renin angiotensin system which further increases the bp which further increases the blood pressure again the damage is Uh, going to continue it is like a self perpetuating cycle a kind of positive feedback a kind of positive feedback mechanism so what is the morphology i told you because of uh, there is you can see the petechial hemorrhages all over the kidney because of rupture of arterioles i told you endothelial damage and the arterioles small arterioles are go going to get ruptured so this gives an appearance of flea bitten kidney okay not only hypertension any Uh, pathological condition of the kidney where blood vessels are involved it causes flea bitten kidney it causes flea bitten kidney okay so what are the histological changes you are going to see this is this is a blood vessel where the lumen has become narrowed and see here the fibrinoid necrosis how do you say this is fibrinoid necrosis see in fibrinoid necrosis the cytological details are lost cytological details are lost you are not able to identify which is the cell boundary which is the cell uh, which is the nucleus and all so that is the uh, that is how you are, you are identifying the pathological changes okay right so this is fibrinoid necrosis okay you can observe the fibrinoid necrosis all, all around okay but now let's understand how to write a diagram of uh, uh, an, uh, malignant nephrosclerosis and again one more thing is onion skinning what is the reason for uh, onion skinning myo fibroblastic proliferation in the where in the intima layer also in the innermost layer as well as in the media that is in the middle layer also okay so that's why the lumen is going to get narrowed even there are thrombosis chances of thrombosis are also there so how to write in histological diagram because that is what is important uh, for your exam So what is the normal structure? This is the this will be the glomerulus. These are the glomerular capillaries. These are the tubules. These are the blood vessels, and the rest is interstitium. What happens in malignant nephrosclerosis? So there will be some fibrinoid necrosis, fibrinoid, fibrinoid kind of necrosis. Okay. even some some of the glomerulus may be entirely sclerosed there may be glomerulosclerosis there may be glomerulosclerosis so what happens to the tubules the tubules may also be atrophied the tubules may be also atrophied but the main thing is lies in the blood vessels so, so there will be hellenization hellenized blood vessels hellenized blood vessels also you can see the thickening of media and intima okay this is what i told you onion skinning onion skinning that means what is another what is the correct name for onion skinning hyperplastic arteriosclerosis hyperplastic hyperplastic arteriosclerosis okay see the changes in benign and malignant they are very subtle the benign uh, phase of hypertension finally the changes are going to get severe and the, it looks like malignant nephrosclerosis okay there is no clear exact border between what is benign nephrosclerosis and what is malignant nephrosclerosis okay hope you understood the uh, changes right what are the main changes fibrinoid necrosis we can say haline change around the blood vessels we can see myofibroblastic proliferation around the blood vessels the tubules are going to get atrophied the glomerulus may become sclerosed over a period of time the interstitium there may be some fibrosis in the interstitium okay so uh, this is all about the morphology of Uh, malignant nephrosclerosis so what are the clinical features obviously since it is a malignant one if the bp uh, blood pressure is very high ima imagine it is a hypertensive emergency it has to be controlled uh, within few uh, hours okay otherwise it is going to damage the kidney and there may be renal failure okay finally it results in renal failure and 
uh, after this not only kidney it is going to affect the eye it is going to it may cause even heart failure okay severe blood pressure can even cause the heart failure all right thank you